Okay, we need to till the cover crop, uncover the strawberries, prune the fruit trees, take care of the asparagus patch, fix the raspberry trellis, mend the soil, prep the raised beds, pavers around the raised beds, plant the cold frame, spray compost in the front garden, get ready for the chicks, do the swarm traps, and the hive insulation. Probably won't get to all of that today, but we're gonna try to at least make a dent in this list today. The first thing that I want to get done today is to uncover these strawberries. Here in zone six in Ohio, our last frost date is like May 11th, I think. And so I usually try to wait until as close to the last frost date as possible to uncover my strawberries, just because I don't want them to start blooming and then frost to kill off the blooms. But this year, it's just been so warm and I'm just afraid that these things are gonna get slimy and yucky underneath the straw. And so I am just going to take this straw off and we're just gonna see how it works out. These are definitely already getting like slimy. They definitely need to be uncovered. Most years it doesn't do this. This year was just really warm. So hopefully these will recover and be okay. Every single year when I uncover the strawberries, I'm like, oh, these look terrible. They're gonna be awful this year. And every single year it works out. So I just try to remind myself every year they're not gonna look nice right after I uncover them. Last year, I'm afraid I may have made a bit of a mistake. I put a weed cloth, like a weed barrier in the rows just to help me keep up with the weeding. And I didn't take it out over winter. And so like the vines have like crossed over and <laughs> it's a jumbled mess. We're gonna have to try to somehow get that weed cloth out so that we can till in between the rows. I'm sure we'll make it happen, but might be a bit of a pain. We're scraping the straw off into piles and then we're gonna reuse it to mulch in between the strawberry rows once Cody has tilled. I always look forward to spring, but honestly, it's the hardest time of the year for me. It's not that I don't love the new life and the warmer air, it's just that in the spring, I feel like I'm always racing against time. In the winter time, I focus on keeping my house clean and cooking hearty meals, but when spring comes around, I have to shift my focus and let things in the house slide to make time for all the outside work. For some reason, this transition is always just really difficult for me. I love it all, I truly do, but if I'm not prepared and then I get stressed out pretty quickly. It's good and exciting, but it's also a lot of work. Cody is also planning a small getaway with his uncles, which will leave me to take care of the farm for a few days, which is totally great. I love it when he can get away, so I'm not at all upset about it, but I do struggle with some anxiety about getting everything done. So we wanna try to get everything done that we can. Basically, it was either genius or really stupid. I'm not sure. I know. Which. I'm trying to figure it out. I think basically we'll just have to see how they turn out to see whether it's genius or not. But like, that is really genius. <laughs> it's really like, cool. it doesn't need to be tilled. It's completely clean. We'll have to see. What's done is done. So it's very apparent that these strawberries needed to be uncovered. They were definitely getting slimy under there. So I'm very glad that we uncovered them. I just really hope now that the weather cooperates and that these don't bloom before we get another really hard frost. In my experience, in my opinion, I feel like one of the most important things for successfully raising organic strawberries, like with no fungicides or anything, is to give them room to breathe, which is why we really like to till rows in between them. You can just let your berry patch grow into like a solid mass of berries, but they're not gonna get much airflow and your berries aren't gonna be as big and you're gonna have more fungus. We're gonna let this strawberry patch air out for a while before we go and mulch the rows like in between the berry rows. We'll just be reusing all of this straw and putting it like this thick in each of the rows to try to help keep weeds down throughout the summer. We're gonna move on over here to our asparagus patch now. But before we do, I'm just gonna interrupt real quick to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Element. Summer is coming up and that means my daily running is gonna get even a lot hotter and sweatier. So it's gonna be even more important for me to be replacing my electrolytes. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that I can feel good about drinking because it's got the minerals in it that I need, but no sugar, colorings, artificial ingredients, or fillers. It can help take care of fatigue, hormone regulation, nutrient absorption, headaches, muscle cramps. I had a few packets with me when I ran a 50K last fall and I didn't cramp even once. My favorites are the citrus and the chocolate. The citrus, I like to use in water. Chocolate, I like to put half a packet into my protein chocolate milk. It tastes good in there. 
And I also know that I'm then getting a little bit of extra bang for my buck in that chocolate milk. If you haven't tried it yet, I hope you get some before summer starts. And right now you can get a free sample pack of eight single serving packets with any order. It's a good deal and it's a good way to try out a variety of flavors. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash more than farmers. And that deal is only available through our link. So go to drinklmnt.com slash more than farmers to get yours today. This asparagus patch is massive and it's way more asparagus than we can eat. And we're running out of space for the different vegetables that we wanna grow. So we're gonna make part of this patch into a place where we can plant other vegetables and not just have one crop of asparagus. This black fabric just pulls up so easily. It just worked so well and cut way down on the weeding. A lot of the reason this fabric is looking so shredded up and parts of it missing is because if you remember back a while ago, what was it, last fall, we burned down our asparagus patch tried to burn it down and that was a recommendation of a lot of different people instead of cutting it down to burn it down all in all it just wasn't a good idea it didn't burn down very well i still had to cut stuff down and it burned up the weed cloth just some patches i'm sure it works especially if you have more just like a small square compact patch but for this it just wasn't a good idea this asparagus was actually like a really good market garden crop. We could sell it for a good price, but it was a lot of work and it takes up a lot of space. And like Michelle said, we just need the space to grow more for our family. And when I came out here and we were talking about like how much we're gonna till under and stuff, I was like, this is so exciting to me to have more space to do more different stuff. Cause yes, we could keep selling it, but with what we're doing now, only trying to sell one crop, it's just not worth it. It's not efficient to try to sell one thing. To make something like this work, you need to be growing a lot of different stuff. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so we're trying to get all the things done. I need to get done to be able to till so that it's not quite as wet because it's actually fairly dry now and it's probably about the driest we're gonna get before spring really hits. So you got the strawberries done, the asparagus done, and now this cover crop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mow it down really short and then come through with a tiller and hopefully it'll till easily enough. Hopefully it's not too established. We just planted it last fall. The scary thing about this cover crop is last fall when we got it, we got kind of desperate. We didn't get like an actual like cover crop mix to put in here. I ran to the store and got a deer food plot mix and this is looking very grassy. I didn't really know what all was in that mix. And so this is just kind of looking like a lawn and grass can be really hard to take care of in a garden. So hopefully it's not actually so established that I can't just till it and it'll be okay, but just have to give it a try. Gonna have to probably till it at least a couple times, probably till it today, let it sit for a little bit and then till it again sometime later on. This thing wouldn't start this morning when I was getting it out to make sure everything was all good. I think it was just cold because it started again then later once it was sitting in the sun. Spring is also an exciting time for me. I love the feels and smells of the dirt and compost. I also love seeing my cow out in the pasture eating the green grass and tasting that richer, sweeter milk. I love cracking open an egg from the chickens and seeing that deep orange color from them being out in the pasture as well. But I can't deny that spring can also be very overwhelming and stressful. I decided that I'm going to quickly plant some greens in these beds. This is supposed to be a pretty warm week. And so I'm hoping they'll have some time to germinate. I'm not gonna plant the whole raised bed. I'm just not gonna take the chance of doing it quite this early yet, but I'm gonna do at least one little section. But before I do that, I want to wipe all the windows off just to make so that the sunlight can come through. They're pretty dirty from just setting outside over winter. Getting the garden tilled and planted in the small windows of time between all the rain that we get in the spring, starting broiler chicks, moving cows, and in general, there's just all of a sudden a ton of work to do. I guess now going into our 11th year on our homestead, I'm starting to get a better grasp on the fact that there are things that are difficult in every season, but every season also has its rewards and focusing on the positive side of it can really help you get through the tough stuff. I'm gonna start with a little bit of arugula. I'm also going to do a little bit of red Russian kale and then some Michelle lettuce and some winter density lettuce. 
I like to get out and do as much prep work as possible even if it's still cold and a little miserable outside. In previous years, I've gotten seedlings planted out late even if I had perfect windows of opportunity for planting just simply because the garden and seed beds weren't prepared. Planting things late will affect the quality of certain cool weather crops especially. I've actually had crop failures simply because I didn't plant on time due to lack of planning ahead. Planting time is pretty simple if everything's ready to go. One of the best parts about spring is that we can all finally spend more time outside again. We really start getting cabin fever in our little 1300 square foot house during the winter. One of the main reasons we started homesteading was to have a better environment to raise our kids. When we're stuck inside during the winter and getting on each other's nerves, we might start questioning our life decisions. But then spring comes and there's nothing better than seeing them all run around outside, enjoying the fresh air and sunshine. I ricked up all of these asparagus canes and we're gonna burn them just to make sure there's no bugs or asparagus beetles overwintering in them. We've had that issue before, so this really helps to cut down on asparagus beetles in your patch. Wow, <laughs> this is crazy. What do you think? This is like a massive amount of space. I'm super excited to fill this up with like lots of different varieties of vegetables. I wanna do more sweet corn this year and like dried beans and things like that. And this amount of space is just gonna open up a whole other world of possibilities. It's been a couple days and it's a really good thing we got this tilled when we did because we got a bunch of rain and now this is just mud. So we're not gonna be doing anything else in here for now. I did wanna take the insulation out of this beehive here, but it's supposed to get pretty cold tonight yet. So I think I'm gonna leave it in there and just wait till the nights are just a little bit warmer. So probably like next week or something. I do have one swarm trap set up back here that I wanna just check on, refresh the bait in there real quick. I actually left this swarm trap set up over the winter. It might not have been the best idea, but I did. And now it's here. And I want this one here just in case my hive decides to split on its own. And hopefully they'll come here and then I'd have another hive. What I'm using for bait is lemongrass oil. Hopefully there's no bees or anything in here. A couple dead flies in there, but nothing else. One of the most important things you can do for yourself this spring is to make a list of the things that need to get done and then go after the most important things first. Even just getting it down on paper will take a huge load off your mind. Even though it is a little chilly out here yet, garden season is coming on strong. And something that makes it a little less overwhelming for us is having the right tools to get things done efficiently. We talk about our favorite garden tools in this video right here. So click on it to watch it next. <laughs> 